Hi, I'm Natalia, and today I will be showing you how to sew a men's button-down shirt. This is a prototype that I created, and I always like to check my pattern before going into the final sample because I want to make sure that the fit is correct and everything looks good with the pattern. My idea is to do this sketch and then have people embroidered on it. And I want to do it in this red fabric. I believe this is a cotton wool blend. I got this from Fab Scrap in New York City. So they sell dead stock fabric, so I'm not 100% sure what the fiber content is, but it's a non-stretch material. I recommend using non-stretch fabric. And you can do a fabric that's like a little more stiff or one that has a little bit of a softer drape to it. If you're not 100% sure of the fiber content of your fabric, you can cut out a little swatch and burn the swatch. If the swatch just breaks away into ash, it means that this is a natural fiber. And if it melts and becomes very hard and plasticky, that means it's a plastic, so probably a polyester. And you can also identify what type of fabric it is by the smell. So if it has a very cellulose smell, then it's a plant uh, fiber. So it could be a cotton or a rayon. And if it smells like animal hair, like burnt animal hair, then it could be something like a wool. So that's just a little fun fact. Um, let's get into the tutorial. This is the cutter's must. Front, yoke, back, top collar, under collar, collar stand, sleeves, and pocket. I have a free printable PDF pattern linked in the description box below so you can follow along with me. I recommend using about a yard and a half to a yard and three quarters of fabric for this. Line your pattern pieces up with the grain line and make sure the grain line is parallel to the selvage. Then cut the pieces out. It's important that the grain line is straight because you don't want your shirt to come out wonky. Let's start with the back and the back yoke pieces. Place the first yoke right side to right side, match the center notch and pin. Flip both pieces to the other side, take the second yoke and place it right side facing down. Pin it and sew at half of an inch seam allowance, just like this. Open it up and we will press the yoke. I like to press it open first and then press the seam allowance up. It just helps it get more crispy. You can use a pressing cloth as well. Then edge stitch. I recommend pinning the shoulders and neckline so nothing shifts when you're sewing. So just take your time and make sure the stitching is neat. Tack down the shoulders and neckline at a quarter of an inch. This will make it easier to attach the front pieces. Now I'm working on the front pieces of the shirt. Obviously this part is optional. I'm just sketching on it and doing an embroidery um, on top of it for, you know, for design aesthetic purposes. Let's move on to the pocket. Fold the top of the pocket half of an inch and press. Fold again at one inch and press. Edge stitch. Fold and press again. I use um, cardstock to get a nice, crisp, neat folded edge. This is to ensure that your pocket comes out even and that the seam allowance is even. Try 
Trim the edges at the top of the pocket. I embroidered the pocket separately to get a seamless looking print. Now pin the pocket and stitch on the edge. Here I'm doing um, a speed paint of my design. I want to make sure that the pocket is not visible. Fold a quarter of an inch and press. This is the placket that we're working on. Fold another inch and press again. You can use um, a manila folder to get a nice sharp edge and then edge stitch. Just like this. Place the front pieces on top of the back piece, right side to right side. Sew the shoulders at half of an inch seam allowance and then overlock. Overlock is a way to clean finish raw edges. You can use the zigzag stitch if you don't have an overlock machine. Should look something like this. Press the seam towards the back and edge stitch. Attaching the sleeve. First, I like to start by pinning the ends together, then by matching the notches. Sew at a half of an inch seam allowance, then overlock. This is what the overlock looks like. Press the seam allowance up towards the body. Use a pressing cloth because you don't want to damage your fabric and edge stitch again. Fold the shirt and pin. Make sure that that seam right there is matching. Super important. Then sew at a half of an inch seam allowance. And don't forget to overlock that edge. Okay, now we're working on the sleeves. So fold the sleeve a quarter of an inch inwards and another inch inwards. Then edge stitch all around. It looks like this. We're almost done. Cut out the fusible for the top collar and the collar stand. The side with the dots is the glue side. Place the fusible on the collar stand, glue side down. Press with a pressing cloth because you don't want to get any of the glue on your iron by mistake. You're going to repeat this step with the top collar. So glue it on to the wrong side. The wrong side just means the inside, by the way. And the right side means the outside facing of the fabric. Flip it over and place the under collar on top of the top collar, right side to right side. So those are the good sides facing each other. Match any notches. Pin it together and sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You'll have to slightly stretch while sewing. Don't be alarmed by that. Once it's sewn, press the seam allowances towards the under collar. This will help it just be a little more crispy when you flip it inside out. Flip it inside out. I also use this little wooden tool to get sharp corners without damaging the fabric. 
go ahead and press the collar. You'll notice that the under collar is an eighth of an inch shorter, but don't be alarmed. So edge stitch on the top collar all around. Place the collar stand on the collar. Make sure the rounded side is down and sandwich them like this. Match the notches, pin, and sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Trim. And flip it inside out. And yes, we will be pressing it again. <laughs> pressing is so essential. I say this in like every video. Like don't skip pressing. <laughs> Fold and press the side at half of an inch seam allowance. This will be helpful later on. So this is the side without the fusible. Should look like this. Match the notches, pin the collar stand to the neck. So I start out with the center and then I go to the edge of the neck and the other edge of the neck and then I evenly distribute the pins. Sew at half of an inch seam allowance. Then press the seam allowance up. Place this folded edge down, match it with that little sewn line. And I recommend basting this too, as well. Sew all around and do this really carefully. Take your time. Press and fold the collar down so it's nice and crispy. Just give it a little press. Make sure you have your pressing cloth. And it looks like that. Okay, onto the hem. So a quarter of an inch guideline on the entire hem. Fold the hem at that quarter inch guideline and sew on the edge. There's no ironing required. So I, this is why I love this method. Fold it again and sew at the folded edge. I do have an in-depth tutorial just on narrow hems if you'd like to see a slower version. So the last step is to sew the buttons and the buttonholes on. I'm using this buttonhole foot compatible with my sewing machine. And all you do is just pick the number, the style buttonhole you want, and it does it for you. And that is the final shirt. So this is the final look, the final shirt. I'd probably style it with, you know, like a little mini purse, kind of like <laughs> my white sneakers. They're kind of out of frame, but they're there. Maybe some skinny sunnies. Maybe I'd even like tie it to make it a little more feminine, you know? So I hope you liked this tutorial for how to sew a men's button down shirt. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll do my best to answer any questions. I have the pattern linked in the description box below. It's a free printable PDF pattern. And there's so much you can do with button down shirts. Like you can play around with the type of fabric you have, the color, the weight, um, you could do color blocking, screen printing, embroidery. You could um, do different types of pockets. You could remove this pocket. Like, I feel like I, I feel like there's a lot I can do. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you next time. Bye.